Um, it's a somber note, guys, that we need to start off uh, today's show with. Uh, one of the absolute screen legends, uh, a man whose face and voice became instantly recognizable and iconic. Whether it was Seventh Seal or whether it's more pop culture stuff like uh, Game of Thrones or whether it's Star Wars or whether it's Rob, I'm going to tell you this, you're not going to approve, but when I think of Max von Sydow, <laughs> I think of his iconic appearance as the villain of Brewmeister Smith in the all-time great classic film Strange Brew. That's what I think of. Strange Brew, my friend. But but uh, unfortunately and sadly, uh, we did hear about the passing of uh, Max von Sydow, who passes away. Uh, at the age of uh, 90. Rob, I know you were a big fan of much of his work, and, and you hear about the passing of Max von Sydow, and, and what are your thoughts and, and some of your your favorite memories of him in the movies? Well, first, let me just say I loved Strange Brew, and I love that he was in <laughs> Strange Brew, and I think, so that speaks, I. <laughs> I think that speaks to his character. I think that, look, he began, a lot of people first... Uh, met Max von Sydow watching Bergman's movies, things like, like you said, Seven Seal, Virgin Spring, The Magician. Um, but then again, you know, I first saw him, I think, I want to say I was like in the sixth grade when he was in two movies, two Swedish films called The Immigrants and The New Land. And uh, then, of course, he was Lancaster Marin in The Exorcist and The Exorcist 2. Uh, he was <laughs> Blofeld and Never Say Never Again. He was he was in Needful Things as the proprietor of everyone's favorite tchotchke stop, a shop. And then, I mean, he was in movies like The Ultimate Warrior, which is a crazy sci-fi film. But as I look at this, I'm just looking at his list of, of credits of things that I liked. I mean, you know, uh, uh, he was in Death Watch. He was in Victory. He was in Conan the Barbarian as the king. Um, of course, Strange Brew. He was he was in Dreamscape. Remember Dreamscape? Another, oh yes. Another another. I mean, you just go and you look at. He was in Vim Vendors until the end of the world. Um, Appelle the Conqueror. I think he was nominated for an Oscar for that. Although I don't know. I don't remember. He was in Awakenings. Um, God, you just you just Minority look up Report. His, yeah, Judge Dredd. Minority Report. He was so good in Minority Report as well. I mean, it's and he would just... also do little. The cool thing about he would also do these little genre things, like um, that that uh, James Purefoy movie, um, uh, Solomon uh, Solomon Kane. That that yeah, little. Yeah, like, so, yeah, he, yeah. He, so he would be in these like Solomon like Kane, his right. prestigious roles, and he would do these little genre things at the same time. It was absolutely amazing. I I mean, he was in Shutter Island. He was in Rush yep. Hour 3, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. I mean, he had, you know, I, I never met him. I was never in a room with him. I, I never saw him speak live. But he was just he was just a presence. And, you know, Drew McWeeny was pointing out on Twitter today that when he was in The Exorcist, when it came out in the 70s, everybody thought he was 70 years old because he had Dick <laughs> Smith's incredible old age makeup. And I think people believed as Drew pointed out, that Max von Sydow was 70 years old for like four decades. Because right. people believed he was so believable in that role and that old age makeup was so good, you know. And uh, what a career. I mean, he spanned, he was an international icon. If you haven't seen one of uh, what I think is one of the great fantasy movies ever made, which is The Seventh Seal, although a lot of people don't think of it as such. Of course, he was, he, he was the soldier who played um, chess with death. And that's kind of where Bill and Ted's, you know, the the yeah. death from Bill and Ted, and also in the last action hero. I mean, it wasn't him, but the Seven Seals so iconic that it's been, you know, how many pieces of pop culture has it touched upon? Uh, he was a giant. He was ninety years old. He had a great life and a great career. And he was he was just one of those. No one looks remotely like him, or you know? sounds like him. <laughs> no, they don't. And he looks like he looks like he's like this spy out of world war two. I mean, he just had one of those amazing faces that, that, you know, I've always thought that you don't have to be a matinee idol. Uh, when you're on the screen, if you, you just need the face, not that he wasn't a handsome man, but he had the face that when he was on screen and when you heard his voice, it's like that dude belongs in movies. And he always has ever since he was a young man. And it's, 
you know, a giant has left us, but man, did he leave a legacy of great cinema behind him. He exuded whether he was in Seventh Seal decades ago or whether he was in a new Star Wars movie. When he was on screen, he exuded power. There was something yes. about his physical stature, his Dude, voice. Totally. He exuded power. And it, it, you're right. We have lost one of the great giants uh, at the age of 90. What a life and what a career. Guys, the question we put to all of you at, at home right now is uh, it's incredibly sad news, obviously, but it's also time to celebrate what an incredible life and legacy he leaves behind. When you think of him and all his huge catalog of films, what are the ones that stand out to you the most? Jump down to the comment section below and leave us your thoughts. All right. 